when when it went down, the whole GNR thing, I didn't even know about it until like it was a done deal. Matt had inside information, so he kind of you know got in there and you know got himself included, which obviously included Dizzy too. By the time it got to me, it was a done deal, and I didn't really care. I mean, Sasha and I had a conversation about it. You know, I I, I said, look. It, it, when you think of Guns N' Roses, you think of the five guys, and, and, and so do I. Mm. You know, that's what it, it should be. But if you're going to induct Dizzy and Matt, I mean, now I feel left out. Mm. I mean, yes, Matt and Dizzy made the Illusion Records. That's absolutely true. And I, I would never take credit where credit wasn't due. But who fucking cares who gets <laughs> in? It's not like anybody gets a dollar for it or whatever. Right. I mean, my honest take on it is, you're inducting Guns N' Roses as Guns N' Roses. Put all the guys that were in the band at that time, you know, you know, you know Bumblefoot and, uh, you know, every, Richard, everybody. Who mm. cares? It's not, like, it's not like we get money for it. But if you're going to have a, a ceremony, yeah, you know, maybe have, you know, Slash Duff and, uh, you know, and, and a couple of the guys speak. But who cares? Because the thing is, they've pretty much proven that they've gotten it wrong every time. I mean, they, I didn't feel so bad. I mean, like I said, I felt bad in the beginning when I found out Matt and Dizzy got inducted and I didn't. I was like, oh, man, you know, it sucks to be left out. Mm. But then I heard the Chili Peppers got inducted, the same thing, but they didn't induct Dave Navarro. Right. Dave Navarro played on some million-selling records. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of weird things. And then, you know, they inducted the Grateful Dead and inducted like 100 people. So, I mean, like, when those things happen... Then it puts it in perspective. I don't really give a flying fuck. You know, it, mm. it's not like I get anything for being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, it's not like suddenly, you know, a hundred more people are going to come to the show. You know, it literally is a line somebody will say when they, you know, I go do a TV show. Gilby Clark, you know, Rock and Roll Hunt, you know, it, 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 and I don't think there's any real validity in it. Could you actually talk about um, the November Rain video shoot? Uh, it was long. <laughs> okay. Like the song? Uh, I, yeah. I had done a lot of videos up to then. And video shoots are usually long. It's a long day. You start early. You know, you do you You make, there's a big fuss about the hair and the makeup and the wardrobe and blah, 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 you know. And then you sit around looking beautiful in your hair and your makeup and your wardrobe for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours waiting for your scene, you know, to shoot. And you do it a million times and then like four o'clock or three o'clock in the morning, it's done, you know. Um... (laughs) But with that video, oh my God, it was there was so many people involved. There was a full orchestra, and so there was all of that to be shot, and that took forever. So forget about. I mean, the hurry up and wait part was ridiculous. We were just hanging out. It was. It. it, it I think it was over a two or three days. Uh, it was. A, it was a long shoot, and um, the first day was with the orchestra and we're on stage and we get through that and that was a really long day and then the second day was the day we shot the wedding scene and that was a really long day (laughs) (laughs) i hope they got good catering at least uh, the catering was was always good okay (laughs) (laughs) and um I remember doing my own hair and makeup for that. And I also brought my own wardrobe. So was that your idea? Yeah. The pearls I, and the yeah. long gloves, right? That was all you? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And the wedding thing, that was my, my little suit that I was wearing. I was trying to look conservative. Yeah. I just, I, I, I like doing that. And there were so many people getting their hair and makeup done. I just figured, let me do it. Let me just do it, you know? And... You know, I had done so many videos that I, I knew how to do that by then. So, yeah, I had fun with that. And, yeah, but it was a really long, long, long day. And I think the third day was the shot, uh, the the wedding reception and the big party. And I opted out. I was like, guys, I'm, I, 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 I think I had something other 
something else planned or something. I, I don't know. I don't remember because it was such a long time ago. But it was a three-day shoot, which is really, really rare for a video, you know. So I think I had, like, scheduled something else to do that day. <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, it was just like, three-day shoot. I, 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 won't, I, I guess I won't show up in that scene, you know. Yeah, it's like, yeah, so, I got to go uh, clean my refrigerator that day. Well, I'd, I'd probably schedule something, like, work-wise, you know. Okay. So, yeah, but uh, whatever the case was, I, I, yeah, it was it was too long. And I wasn't, I wasn't the major player, so I didn't think I would be missed, you know. I didn't think it would be such a big deal for me not to be in that last shot, you know. And it wasn't, you know. It was just a bunch of people running, in, running around in the rain, <laughs> right? <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so it's okay. I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could have gotten like a stunt double to jump on on the table or whatever. You got you're prominently featured in that video forever. So you uh, you did do what you needed to do, and that's cool that you did your own makeup and wardrobe. That was your idea to do that. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, rehearsing with everybody was amazing. When I first met them, I'll never forget how the whole tour came about. That's the other part that was really weird and amazing at the same time. I was singing in um, small bands and um, doing my own recordings in New York. And I was singing with um, a one band signed to TVT called Rise Robots Rise. And they have these very intricate, very interesting background parts. And we needed one more person for this big show at the Palladium. And it was going to be our biggest show ever. And so we brought in this new girl that was Roberta. It's the first time I met her. And uh, she was recommended by her sound guy. And she was really into it. And we just rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed and uh, did the show. And she kept saying, I'm moving to L.A. after this. I'm just here in between tours. She was already on tour. I think it was with Motley Crue or it was with a couple of different. Cinderella, Cinderella. Yeah, and so she had already been on big tours, and she um, we sang together, and it was great. And so then she's like, bye, moving, and she left. And so I'd only met her and knew her for a couple of weeks during those period, that period of time, and then she was gone. So I had wanted to go on a big tour while I was shopping my album to get an album deal. So my demo was done, and I had it in the hands of the t- attorney to take it out. And so I don't know if you believe in this, but I believe in the power of of intention and focus and bringing things into form, you know? So I literally was sitting with a candle every night, right? Saying, I want to go on tour. I want to go on a big world tour and I want to sing and I want to be on this and on stage and do that while my, my um, demos being shopped. And I want to come back and record my album. And so literally while I was sitting there with my candle, the phone rings and it's Roberta. And she's like, do you want to go on tours with, tour with Guns N' Roses? And I was like, oh. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, that's how it went down. Hi, this is Lisa Maxwell from the 976 Horns on the Use Your Illusion Tour. And you're listening to Appetite for Distortion. What we did between songs was... Um, Well, there was never any set list, so (laughs) we had to be listening, you know, we, every, every musician or group of musicians had a little room under the stage, like a little waiting room with a TV monitor so we could see what was going on on stage. And then we had to just be listening and ready for like, if we weren't on, if we were sitting down there waiting, we weren't on welcome to the jungle, let's say. So then at the end of the tune, we would get ready to run up on stage. We had to listen for the first few notes of the next tune. And, you know, by the end of the two years or two and a half year, however long we were with them, like it was, it was pretty easy to tell, like, okay, we could, we could name the tune in one note, you know, but um, in the beginning it was challenging, like, wait, are we on this tune or not? You know, and then we <laughs> run up and we were on the position on the very top of the stage in the middle. So we had to run up all these stairs and, Okay. It's pretty funny. All right. I'll give that because uh, people are excited to hear from you. I'll give credit that question from uh, one of my listeners, Dirk, from uh, from Germany. Because uh, I, I can only uh, like imagine you at the, at the beginning. It's like, 
ready? You have like one foot on like one step, like ready to go. Yeah. Or if it's walking yeah, in the jungle, heels, you have a break for four and, minutes. Yeah, heels and <laughs> horns and, you know, like falls. Uh, our hair was down to our ass. You know, it wasn't all our hair. But, you know, I mean, like we had to, we were in like costume practically, you know, with these high heels and then the horns. And the very first, um, I think the first shows we played got reviewed by the New York Times and, and the reviewer said, and, they, and they've added models holding horns, <laughs> like a horn model, horn section of models pretending to play the instrument. Oh, and wow. I was like, well, I'm flattered that you think I'm a model, but like, you know, we're really playing. The, <laughs> so I remember doing a couple of interviews, um, one with the Boston Globe. I had a friend who was working there and she's like, I'll interview you. And you're like, get the word out that you're actually playing. <laughs> But you are proof that it gets better. So Duff slash, I mean, these are people that all could have easily lost their lives, but look at what they are now. They're, like I said, I don't think I'm overselling it by saying you guys are our role models in the year 2020. You know, I'm sure you wouldn't say you were a role model when you were touring the world with Guns N' Roses, but I think you're a role model now. No, it, it, you know what? It was the right time and the right thing to be a pirate, you know? So <laughs> I, like, I like that. I mean, at that particular time of our lives, when you're young, and you're out there, and you're rebellious, and, you know, you're doing what you think is right at the time. And, you know, I meet younger kids, and younger bands, and they're partying, and they're doing their thing. And I got nothing to say about any of that, except for, you know, you're going to get there when you're going to get there. You're going to do what you're going to do until you don't do it anymore. It's an old expression, you can't drag a guy off a bar stool. You know, it's like, hmm. until you figure out where you want to go, you know, and I got to say, a large percentage of those years were great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was saying, I don't go back, oh man, it was horrible. I was in such bad shape. And yes, there was times. <laughs> but for myself, I could just only tell my story. And my story, you know, like I said, is in the book. But, and there were times where I'm like, okay, well, this is out of control. And like, like you just said, we're all still alive. That that kind of blew my mind, you know, when I think about it. I'm like, back in the day, as hard as we went at it, I thought someone was going to die, for sure. And I used to worry probably more about the other guys than me. But uh, especially Duff, I, I, I thought any day, because there was times when I I would see him, and I'd be like, oh, my God, you know. Wow. But... You just look at him now. Know, so we've all lived... We've all lived to tell the tale, if you will, and that's, yeah. you know, with the exception of people like that we love, like, like Scott, you know, Scott, and, you know, and then the people that we lost, you know, Chester and, and Chris Cornell, right. you know, uh, and, uh, you know, the guys that we lost along the way, you know, uh, a lot of musicians, you know, a lot, so, and friends. And, I know, I know. Uh, yes. Jeez. You never, you know, you never knew what was going to happen. Honest to God, you know that honestly the, from day to day, roll, right? We never, never knew what was going. The go band that did a two and a half hour show with no set list. Yeah, go wow. go. See, tell me what band does that th th right. these days? Right, <laughs> and, and two and, and half the, hours. And the stage was so big that so our, big. we had these like dressing rooms underneath the stage, yeah. and so. You know, we'd be like playing cards and hanging out under under the stage. And then they'd be playing a song. They'd start playing a song that we're on. And then we'd be like, oh, we got to go upstairs. And, you know, yeah, so we'd yeah. run up onto the stage and start performing. It was insane. It was like that all the time. They, they, he, would, he would introduce a song because we didn't know what the song was going to be. So he started <laughs> talking. And then by what he said... We knew it was going to be double talking jive or jive, talking, you know, something like mother. that. Yeah. Yeah. He would say something <laughs> and go, double talking jive. I'm up, you know. Right. So you go right. racing up to the top. It was crazy. crazy. I mean, think about it. No set list. How would a light guy get the cues? Oh, man. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Insane. It's all different now because everything's automated and everything runs oh, off a central right. computer. Back then, it was all, all analog. Yeah. I mean, it was all pretty just, high tech, yeah. but I mean, even, even to the pyrotec pyrotechnics had to be. Mm -hmm. Had a, right. you, you always we had, the, had a lot of those too. Sometimes, yeah. it, and we here's a good one. We had a guy named um, what was his name? The pyrotechnic guy, um, not Nitro. Uh, he had Nitro, he, wasn't he, it? No, Nitro. Nitro. His, no, no, that's, he had a, total, his, that's a total roadie name. He right had there. a name like 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 that like like Nitro, and and he had a he he had a twitch. <laughs> that's what you want from your pyro guy, yeah. <laughs> Nitro. Oh, no, his name was Pyro. That was it, Pyro. Pyro! Pyro. 
<laughs> that was his name. That was his name. That was his name, Pyro, and he had a switch. And he was in charge of the pyrotechnics. Oh my and, god! And um, you never that. knew. You never knew how how much he was going to fill the the um, canisters up with until he went off. And you know, <laughs> there, I there would, was some I, close. There was some. There was so close. Yeah. And the horn players would be playing, oh and then the, a flash pot would go off, and you could see like Ann King go like this. 